Because I've got nine grandchildren. There's really nothing to it. So far. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> but the journey is a long and a strange one. It doesn't always go the way you think it's going to go. And we had the first grandchild and everything was just amazing, just amazing. We went to the Vancouver Children's Hospital to see our first grandson, Max. And the kids were so excited to have a grandson. And we just had flowers and chocolate and toys and everything. And we came into that room and we presented. We said, Max, welcome to the world. Here are the flowers. We put them in the balls. Here's the candy. We ate it. And we played. We had a party. And we actually got thrown out. <laughs> and, and then... Again, two years later, we're waiting for the call because my daughter-in-law's in the hospital. She's in labor. We're going to have another grandchild. <laughs> and it's getting, we're waiting, and we're getting on each other's nerves, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and finally the phone rings, and it's a girl. And we get the call, and we drive to the neighborhood, we're to the hospital, and we're walking down the hallway, and we got more fun, and we got more candy, and we got more toys, and we're about to go in the room. And the nurse comes up to me and says, Mr. Scott, before you go in the room, I have to talk to you. And I said, well, if it's about the party, that's fine. <laughs> children's fault, and I don't condone that kind of behavior. <laughs> Can I go see my granddaughter? And, uh, and uh, they said, no, Mr. Scott, we have to tell you, your granddaughter was born with Down syndrome. And I just, I didn't know what to do. I just got very scared. And I started yelling at them that that wasn't true. And they started yelling at me about a chromosome. And, and, and I looked at the kids, and the kids were looking at me because Daddy's always so funny. He always says something that makes everything okay. And I just had tears in my eyes. And then, to this weird moment in my life, this voice came through, and Mr. Scott, go see your granddaughter. So we walk in the room, and we all got it. Everybody in my family got it. Without saying a word, we realized what was really happening was that we now had an angel. This is not the kind of angel that you've seen in the Hallmark cards. This is the angel that will walk with you in the world. This is the angel that will show you laughter in a way you never knew how to laugh. And cry the way you never knew how to cry. And you'll spend a day with this angel and you'll see the world. And you will be shunned. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you will be exhausted. And at the end of the day, you will notice your heart got bigger. And you will also begin to understand that funny little word called compassion. You really get it. And so, in the middle of all this, I'm trying, as my grandchild is growing up, I'm trying to think, well, what can I do? What can I do? I, I'm a guy that plays this weird little instrument. And, what? and just then, I met a woman named Joe Mills who said, hi, I'm Joe Mills, and I've got an organization called the Down Syndrome Research Foundation, and you're a musician, aren't you? I said, yes. She goes, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks from now, 250 children with Down Syndrome. Vancouver Hotel, be there. <laughs> so I'm excited. I'm just blown away. I think this is going to be the most amazing thing, and I don't even know why yet. And so the night before I have to play this show, I'm, I'm trying to think, well, i got to write a song. I've got to make up a special song like I did. You know that first song we did tonight, I made up for the choir. That one I blew the food on. I've never played flute in public in my life. <laughs> just, you know, to keep these four. So all night long, I'm in my studio, and I've got this crumpled up piece of paper, this envelope, and I'm thinking, okay, song, a song about this. And the only thing I kept coming up with was the angels, the angels. And, and I, I just, so I, you know, I was drinking too much coffee, eating too much chocolate, and there were no toys. And, I, and, and next thing I know, I'm in the Vancouver Hotel, and there's 250 children, and, and, and I started playing music. And that's when I realized, it's a typo. It's not downs, it's ups. Because when they hear music, they start rocking. Because they love music, and they sing along with you, and it's just the party started happening. And I started feeling really confident, and I got halfway through the show, and I said, I made up a song for you, and I've never sung it for anybody in my whole life, and I'm gonna sing it right now. And the whole room stopped, and I took out that crumpled up piece of envelope. And I saw I'd have a grandfather thing. And there were words going up, over, crossed out, covered in chocolate, covered in coffee cake. And they're sitting there waiting for their song. And so in my desperation, I got down on my knees, and I took that piece of paper, and I stuck it way out here. And I 
pull the microphone down, and I'm staring at that piece of paper with everything I've got. And I get about halfway through the song, and it's going really well. And I look up to see how it's going, and there's nobody there. <laughs> they all came around behind me to see what the heck I was staring at. <laughs> Thank you. 